Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about TrueNAS Scale, specifically version 22.02.3. Now, this is not me slamming on scale. They call it stable, and I'm not saying it's not stable. I'm saying parts of it are stable. I want to get this out of the way at the beginning of the video because the question comes up a lot. Should I be moving to TrueNAS Scale? And if you're just using it for storage purposes, as in a NAS for Samba shares, a NAS for NFS shares, yes, seems to work perfectly fine for that. I would consider that part thus far stable from all the testing I've done. It's not without any bugs, but no operating system is. TrueNAS Core is pretty much my go-to for a lot of things and still my preferred for some of my virtualization targets because it seems to be edging out for now the performance a little bit, but that takes time and tuning. And this is a pretty ambitious project because IX Systems has been supporting the BSD project-based TrueNAS Core for a long time. Time. TrueNAS Scale being Linux-based offers a lot of opportunity and they're going to be building any scale-out architectural cluster. So, hey, I see all the future and I know that's where they're going in terms of a lot of development. They're going to leave TrueNAS Core to be a quite stable product, I believe, supported for a number of years. But this is where a lot of innovation is going. But all that innovation comes at the cost of stability to applications and building this framework with a Kubernetes managing Docker is no small undertaking. There's a lot of tooling going on there. What I do want to cover today, and I'm moving some systems to this so I can get more videos out in the future and more tutorials and help with the progress of this project, but I think people should be aware of where it's at. So this is kind of a status of the project right now. I do know they have another beta that I'll be doing some testing on, but that one's labeled beta, so I figured I'll stick with what's labeled as stable. I want to talk about how the applications work, some concepts in there, and well, kind of what doesn't work with it. But in terms of just setting up storage and doing in-place migrations, most of that seems to be perfectly fine. So too long, didn't watch rest of video applications have some bugs the storage at least seems stable and ix systems has years and years of working with zfs so where they're building all that stability in you still get zfs whether you're doing it with TrueNAS Core or TrueNAS Scale. So they're still both good products, but with ambition comes bugs. We'll just say it like that. Before we dive into the details of this video, let's first. Are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering, storage, or virtualization project? Is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly? Not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. Now, the first person I want to give a shout out to here is Wendell, who has a full setup guide for setting up Portainer containers and Tailscale. I'll leave that video linked down below. And there's a link from that video after you watch and go through his version of how to set this up, which, by the way, doesn't mean using the applications that IAC Systems has. He's setting up Portainer to manage them because, well, he realizes, like I do, there's a lot of bugs that need to be worked out. So it comes down to what kind of experience you want to have. So the Level 1 Forums has a in-depth step-by-step guide of how to get a lot of this going that accompanies that video. Definitely read through it. Something worth mentioning that me and Wendell talked about is this right here. And it's the snapshot management problem. And I will leave a reference to this because I think it's really important. If you run into some unusual problems, such as when you're doing some testing on applications and they start crashing and create, oh, I don't know, several hundred snapshots later, uh, there's not any way to handle those through the UI. So this bug report, which has been going on for a little while, uh, yes, this will give you some ways to get rid of some of the bugs that will come with it if you do testing and you end up with a broken, say, Nextcloud installation with lots and lots of snapshots. Uh, so I'll just leave reference to these at the beginning so people can easily find them. Now, next, let's jump over here to my system and my setup. Now, I have this on a few machines, and I did in-place upgrades on some, and I've done fresh installs on a few lab machines. So I've spent a lot of time testing scales. I'm really ready to dive into it to find any of the little issues that may work. And one of the ones I was happy to see fixed is on my TrueNAS Mini specifically, hey, look, all of this lines up perfectly. So thank you team at IX because this was a bug where the drives wouldn't display properly. But you know, sometimes it's the minor little things when you have some of their hardware and it starts working. 
the in-place upgrade on all the machines I did it with went really well. I didn't really run into any issues other than one of them I created, and that was the shares. So when you go over to the shares, all the shares copied over perfectly fine. But I did realize, and this is strange, I didn't get an error in core. Um, I had this bound to an IP address that I had eliminated, but the share kept working, as in the service kept starting. I would get an error that the service wouldn't start. And as soon as I went in here, it says bound to invalid IP. I checked the box and hit save and it worked perfectly fine. That was the extent of my troubles in terms of getting this going from the in-place upgrade. When I look at like the storage, all the storage migrated over perfectly fine. Even, and we'll look at like this example right here for the backup folder that I have. We'll click the three dots and we'll go to view permissions and then we'll edit. This is an ACL permission that I had and it copied all the permissions over the users. Everything worked perfectly fine. So great job on the in-place upgrades. Of note, when you're doing these in-place upgrades, they're one way. Once you've done the upgrade, it does not leave a boot slice option to go back. This is something you have to really think about before you do. And once you've done any pool upgrades, you may not be able to go back to true NAS core at that point because there may be a ZFS mismatch. So please be careful before doing it. Always back up, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of doing the ACLs, Yes, there's definitely some quirkiness in here that I'll be covering because for some reason, even though this is an SMB share, it keeps one offer NFS shares as an option for the ACL options. Um, that might be why I need to do a video on it because, well, I had some trouble with that, but I know how to get around it. And in short, uh, strip all the ACLs out and add them manually and build these and the share permissions work perfectly fine. But didn't have any other issues in that. Like I said, the reason I'm diving into this is to do those future coming videos. I think it's also worth noting this. Here is one of my TrueNAS 13U2 core machines. If we go over here to tasks and we look at replication tasks, this was replicating to the system we refer to as APOC. It's one of the newer systems we added to our fleet and it was running core. I did the in-place upgrade and all this works perfectly fine. Replicating between back and forth between core and scale, didn't run into any issues at all. Even existing replication jobs just kept working, whether they're going to or from scale. So if you have those set up and you're still mix and matching which servers you're upgrading, I didn't run into any problems there. So I think it's worth mentioning that that does work. And because I know someone will ask, what about Active Directory in scale? I don't have an answer for it because I have done zero testing on it. I just didn't have time to get to that aspect of it because we don't have anything other than Active Directory Lab at my office. So there's not one readily available until I build a new one to attach it to. But nonetheless, uh, it does have the option to, but I've not done any testing to tell you if there's any weird quirks. Now let's talk about applications and the way they're implemented. This is where some of the quirkiness comes in that I think people should be aware of. Now, this is the official list of applications as of right now from TrueNAS and supported by IAC Systems. There are other ones you can add in here. There are other catalogs that can be added, such as TrueCharts. They are a separate group of individuals that also are building applications that give you a lot of uh, options in it. I've got quite a few things they're maintaining, and you also have the launch Docker image option over here. But let's start where the first bugginess is and kind of how the UI works. I just want to point this out for people that may be getting confused. If I go to here, manage catalog, the launch Docker is still over here, but it doesn't work. What if I go to manage Docker images? It doesn't work. But if I go to available applications and hit launch Docker, it does launch Docker. So there's one note. Then we go to catalogs or actually we go to settings and we'll choose pool. The choose pool option comes up for over here. We go to settings and we choose pool, it doesn't come up. What about the advanced settings? It doesn't come up. But if you go to applications and we go to advanced settings, ah, it comes up. What if you go to manage catalogs and choose advanced settings? It doesn't come up. There's a lot of UI kind of unusualness that causes some confusion when you're going, how do I get to those settings for things? That is uh, definitely kind of a problem for me because it causes me undo clicking to try to figure out why I can't get to a menu I thought I could get to and maybe logging in, logging out. Uh, that little quirkiness is still in here. And as I said, this is the labeled stabled one. This is where all the problems I've had have been is around the way it's handling applications. One of the other notes, I did change the cluster and service CIDR notation here. And I did that on purpose because one of my problems is my lab is a 172.16 network and they default to using 172.16 and a slash 16. So they're using so much of the network and it overlap with mine. So I just 
shrunk them down a little bit and moved them somewhere else because when it overlaps and everything's uh, unable to route back and forth, it creates a different confusing problem that I didn't realize until I looked at the advanced Kubernetes thing. So if you have a network that is overlapping with theirs, you will have to change it, reduce it to a smaller block that doesn't overlap, whatever your options are. Next networking thing you may notice here is uh, we can choose E0 or choose other network interfaces on there, but you may not choose multiple for management. So if you wanted some of these applications in some networks, but not in others, well, that's not really an option right here. And even though, and I'll say even though, because we can look at something such as uh, current status of, let's look at application like sync thing. I know sync things in here, right here. If we go with the install of sync thing and they do have an option, under the networking that says to use host network, that box doesn't seem to work here. It works on some applications, but not this one. This is where, well, it's kind of quirky as well, because if you can't necessarily choose the host networking application, you're going to have a problem sometimes with getting things where you want them to be. There's not really any easy solution for that. So not real fine grain network. Now, I know they're changing this in the future. I've seen this in some forum posts that these are on their future workload to get done. I don't know when it's going to be, if it's going to be in that new beta. I'll test that new beta to see how many of those features have made it there. But obviously, it's still all under development. But, you know, these may be deal breakers for some of you that are building and working on this. Speaking of sync thing, this is the one application that works really, really well. And unfortunately, Nextcloud works, but I don't think it works well. And let me explain here. If you go through a default Nextcloud install and you follow IX Systems videos, which I'll link down below, they just did a video only a few days ago on this topic. And if we look at how they tell you to set it up, and if you're following their setup guide, and I did, and we take the host path for the Nextcloud data volume, it does save the data there. The problem is, and this comes down to the way Docker was implemented in here, it saves the data, but I can't redeploy a new Docker image and just reattach the data. It breaks. It will not do the proper setup on here. It also isn't backing up the database. It's only grabbing the user data and files. So if you're using any type of application as an xCloud, such as, oh, I don't know, setting up users and tying a calendar to it, all that gets stored in a database. Now, it does have the option, which is not covered in the video that iX Systems released. It does have the option to store the Postgres database. I found that by doing this, it would cause it to crash though. And actually it crashed and created that earlier bug that I alluded to. And I know there's a way around it. I don't remember what that way was and it's gonna go out of scope of this to really dive into details. But in short, yes, it's not backing up the database, which means you're not backing up your data, which could lead to data corruption. And unfortunately, I've seen people who, you know, had a problem with their system and they go, oh, where's all my data now? Because they only backed up like the user data. So you have your files, but any of that extra data that was stored in a database is going to go away. Now, the other weird thing is you load Collabra separate. If you want to brick your Nextcloud installation instantly, uh, go into Nextcloud, go to apps, look for the Collabra online built-in code server, click download enable, and it will quit working and you'll have to reset up the application again. So that is at least one thing that I know is broken. You do load the Collabra online connecting tool and then you connect it to there. And I actually covered that in the Ag System video. So Ag System video is accurate in terms of getting it set up with one minor change. And that's gonna be over here in storage. And we're gonna go ahead and click the three dots and look at the permissions. And please note the permissions are set to WW data. They omitted that in their particular video. Maybe it's because it didn't need that previously, but if I didn't set that, I couldn't get it to write. It specifically seems to have to be that user in order to get that writing uh, there. If not, you'll end up with a different error message when you try to get your Docker to install and your data to go there. But please note, using this means the database application is not being backed up easily. And out of scope of this, yes, there's a completely different way to do this inside of the True Charts version of it. And they have a work instruction on theirs, but it's not without its quirks as well. It's not all done through the UI. There's a lot of things you have to do through the command line. All right, now let's get back to the apps. Now, the good news is SyncThing, 
The one tool I use the most on my TrueNAS to synchronize data between several servers of things like my other outside of TrueNAS devices, all my different Linux servers I have running, I only really care about the data that gets created on them, backing up SQL databases and things like that through a series of scripts. And then I have my SyncThing synchronizing all these. And SyncThing does it right. This was actually well implemented here. And one of the easy ones that I'll do a dedicated video for, but in short, we're gonna go here and just point the mount to sync thing data. And we'll hit next, 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 leave everything else at default, not gonna change anything else and just let it go and deploy. I'm actually really happy with the way this turned out and the way it works because this is the way Docker applications are supposed to be deployed and work. We see it's active and yes, it deploys really fast provided it already has an image available. Go to the web portal. We're gonna say yes. It's gonna ask me about some settings. Let's go ahead and set them. Probably wants the UI to have a username and a password, and uh, we'll change it just to a dark theme because, you know, don't want to blind anyone. It's going to reload real quick. Hey, look, we've set it up. Uh, let's add another folder, Tom's Share. For, well, for YouTube. There we go. Tom's Share for YouTube. We'll make the folder ID the same. We're going to hit Save. So I've customized it. I can always add some remote devices. I'll do a dedicated video soon on this now that I've spent a lot of time testing it. But let's go ahead and see what happens over here when we stop and delete our application. So we're going to go here and stop it and wait for it to stop. It actually stops almost slower than it starts. So we'll go ahead and delete it. We're just going to blow it away. But my data, because we told it to have a host path, and this is the way it's supposed to work. This is the ideal situation for when you're setting things up. So this is another sync thing. Next, next, point it at that same storage. And let's talk about that real quick. Go here. And even though we haven't finished building it, I want to stop here and just take a look. Hey, look, there's Tom share for YouTube. There's the config data. No application data is in here, just that config. There's my config XML and different things that created the certificate and the uh, database that got created. So let's go back over here and we're just going to point it back to here. Then next again, next, 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 save. So we've just destroyed the application, but the data store and the configuration is all saved in here. And ideally, this is what Nextcloud should be doing as well, where it, we just point it at one path and say, save everything about the application settings, save the data that the application and everything over there, but don't save the actual application. That's just can be blown away. The application shouldn't matter. That way I can replace it whenever I want. I don't need to bother backing it up. And whenever there's an update, I know my data is safe and I can do something with it. And if we open up the web portal here, hey, look, there's our same things again, all working. So this worked as expected. And I hope they have all the apps. Maybe a few of them work that way. I know MB, I tested, that worked. Sync thing worked. And NextCloud being the most popular one people asked about didn't work. I haven't had a chance to test everything under the True Charts one, but obviously this is kind of an issue and something I want people to really consider. Now, as far as how I have this managed in our network and we have like Sync thing data right here. Now we have this data set I created prior and I pointed it at. So you do have to go and manually create that data set. But truly, I didn't have to do any permissions management or changes here. It worked right out of the box perfectly fine. Now, from a data management standpoint, I can go over here to data protection. I can say, hey, let's go ahead and build a replication task for that particular storage uh, data set and go down here to sync thing. Now I know my data, wherever I send it, is all backed up. Even if I wanted to send it to something that wasn't another TrueNAS, I could replicate that data with something like rsync. Nonetheless, I have a backup of it and my data is separate from application. And that is the ideal way things should work. And this is one of the reasons I made this video to kind of just talk about and get you started with the concept of where TrueNAS scale is. It's not as easy for me to answer the question of, should I upgrade to scale? Should I move my core system to scale? Is it ready? Ah, do you need applications like Docker uh, to work perfectly fine, even if you're pulling manual Docker images, or do you need to put things in different VLANs and separate networks based on all the interfaces? Well, you're going to have some hard times with that because it doesn't seem to be completely finished. Uh, if you are like me and go, I just want to run sync thing. 
Does it work? Yes, it does. Awesome. Well, there's a solution. So I can upgrade to TrueNAS scale because that's my use case. Now, for a lot of people, they're going to be running things externally and they're going to run, as I do, most of my servers are individual virtual machines. So I have the server itself fully contained. And even so, I'm not dealing with backing up the entire virtual machine or other Linux instance or Raspberry Pi even that I may have running. I just use SyncThing because it's lightweight and I load them. And it's one of my favorite little tools to, you know, synchronize all the data, both on site and then replicating it off site and using uh, the transport layer and encryption of it. So yeah, because that application works and I understand it, it works well. So that's a way to do it. Now, is there a command line way to get your data and databases backed up on the whole Nextcloud thing? Yeah, I don't know if I want to cover it in a video because I'm hoping that it gets to the point where your user experience is just using it through the UI and it just works flawlessly. So I don't know if I'm going to do a video on next cloud until I feel it's something that's more manageable and works really well, because if not, just run it all the way in its own separate instance. Now, the last thing I'll touch on, and Wendell talked about this in his video, is some of the issues and quirkiness with the way virtualization works. I'm going to keep an eye on it and do some testing. I didn't spend a lot of time with it because I already know some of the flaws with it. It's not as advanced as other things out there for virtualization platforms. Uh, so I may wait till that gets a little better. But Wendell has a whole guide on that. Uh, that talks about installing Portainer in a virtualization system on there so you can have a better experience. And if you're looking for a Portainer level experience, well, then use Portainer. This is not that. They're not there yet. I'm not saying they won't get there. I'm not saying this is abandoned ship and let me just hate on the product because I realize the developers are working very hard at this. This is the goal to get this to a wonderful user experience. It just takes time to get there. It takes people people like me, people like many of you, testing it, finding bugs, reporting them, looking for the workarounds. And, you know, I'll link down below to uh, that whole true charts thing because they have some good information on there of like how the PVC storage works and things like that. So there's a lot of learning you can do for their implementation of it. It's something that I think we'll get there in the future. I'm really looking forward to when, you know, I can start playing with a little bit more gluster on it because, hey, I like the scale out concept. I like that it's running on Linux. And I think big picture, I like where they're going. It's just going to be a bug ridden ride to get there like all big projects are. But hey, that's life. Uh, leave your comments and thoughts down below or head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.